Uh, good morning. Uh, in this video, I am going to uh, introduce a whole new game to the world. Um, this game is called The Game of Dice Baseball, and the first season will be 1979. <clears throat> Let's, uh, this is a project I've just I've been working on for uh, a couple weeks, a few weeks, and I think it's, it's uh, just about ready. So let me show you the uh, cards first. So here's a sample of the pitcher cards. Uh, so this is obviously the Astros and then the tail end of the Tigers. You can see Mark Fidrich on here. Uh, the beauty of this game is that it has every single player who played in the season. And so this is actually uh, down to um, four games started. Uh, Fernando Arroyo got into six games. Uh, I saw even a batter who got into a game as a pinch runner who was a hitter, I mean a pitcher, and had no official at-bat or anything like that. So uh, it's every single player who got into a game, uh, every single player who pitched in a game. And so that's, uh, you're going to, this is going to be perfect for as-played replays. Uh, and anyone else who just is curious about how the season went and uh, different players. So you can see J.R. Richards card here. Uh, this was one of the best um, pitching rotations in the major leagues, pitching staffs. Uh, so you have the Astros here, Ken Forrest, Joe Necro, 20-game winner. Um, and then you, you can even see the back end here of the players. So the game uses statistics. Um, and this is a calculated statistic here, stamina, which is just a batter's face divided by games so batter's face divided by games so if you had had that you could actually calculate this stamina yourself but basically it's it's how many batters on average this person uh this player faced so jr richard faced 31 batters on average uh per game you know obviously he didn't have any games he didn't start so per start he was averaging 31 um 31 pitcher or batter's face per game so um, <clears throat> I won't get into the nitty gritty details of everything, but, uh, these are the cards. Uh, here's a sheet of batters and this is, uh, the, the reds, 79 reds. Um, you can see here, this is the player I was talking about. So Ed Farmer from the White Sox, uh, got into one game, had no plate appearances, no at bats. He did not steal any bases. So I assume what happened was he got in as a pinch runner <laughs> for one game. Um, but it's down to that level of detail. In fact, uh, there are probably, there are several pinch runners, pinch hitters, um, in the game. And I tried to find their positions, but, uh, when I couldn't, they're just a pinch runner or a pinch hitter. That's how they got into the season. Uh, but we have, you know, Joe Morgan, Johnny Bench, George Foster, Ray Knight, Dave Concepcion. So, uh, we have their positions, primary positions, plus their, uh, how they batted. Um, we have their stolen base percentage here. Uh, so instead of the stamina for the pitchers, it's stolen base percentage for the batters. So there's a lot of symmetry in the cards between the hitters and the pitchers. Uh, obviously, there are different types of statistics for the hitters. And uh, again, it's, it's all based off of uh, their actual statistics from the year. So you're going to learn a lot about the players. Um, and then... What does the game engine look like? That's uh, what everybody wants to know, I'm sure. And so here is the game engine. And so this is sort of the, the primary game engine here. And the thinking here is I wanted to create, the concept is that I wanted to create a baseball game where you had conditionals. So if this happens, then that. Else, this happens. So there's sort of a default. And then there are some conditionals which uh, sort of move you off of the default, either toward better players or toward lesser players. So that's how this works. The yellow uh, you can see here are our conditionals. Uh, so on different roles, you have these conditionals, and then some of them are just straight up roles. That's what you get. Um, and then some of them have the conditional statements. So let's say, um, well, it's a 50-50 game. So a one to three on the 50-50 die is going to go to the batter's chart 
and a four to six is going to go to the pitcher's chart. Um, and what happens, let's say we go to the batter chart, <clears throat> and uh, who can we have here? So let's look at Dave Concepcion. Let's say Concepcion rolls a, an 11 or 1-1 one, one on the batter side. And so we look at his uh, batter card. And then we say, do his triples, are they greater than 2? And we would say, yes, his triples are greater than 2. That means we're going to take this result here, which is a triple. If, for instance, we had uh, Johnny Bench. Can we see him? Yeah. So Johnny Bench here. If he was batting, are his triples greater than 2? No, his triples are 0. So the default applies to him, which is a single. So he would not get a triple in that bat. Doesn't mean he can't get a triple. You can still get a triple off of the pitcher. Um, we're here. So if the pitcher's uh, batting average against is not less than 241, then that's going to be a triple. Uh, so there, there is a way for batters still to get triples, um, but just isn't going to be off of the batter card. So if we look at the pitcher side, let's say the um, make sure we get that in here. So let's say Ken Force is pitching, pitching, and we hit a, off the pitcher side, and we roll a 44. So is uh, Force's whip less than 1? Uh, his whip is 1.07, so it's not less than 1.00. So then we take the default. I uh, don't know if we have anybody whose whip is. We don't have anybody on this page who meets that criteria. But if the whip was less than one, then we would it would be a short fly out, um, a shallow fly ball. So you can see how these uh, uh, is, is is the average average against greater than two ninety nine. Uh, don't know if we have anybody here. Okay, here's one Arroyo. Hopefully you can see him. So Arroyo's average against is three forty. So in this instance, instead of a strikeout, it would be. A single. So you can see how it takes uh, different players into account and their actual statistics into account. And you can see all the way through here, there's there's multiple um, opportunities to, to do the conditionals. So you know, you're going to want to either play with the sheets or um, I ha also have roster sheets that I'm going to be creating for this game. So if you don't like cards and you just want to play off of roster sheets, you can do that as well. Um, here is a chart. So if the play is, let's say, a hard ground ball here, then you want to find out where the hard ground ball goes to. Uh, then you'll go to the GH, which is a hard ground ball. You'll roll. Hopefully, you will have rolled your D10. And then you'll just check this against uh, the, you know, if it's an 8, then that's a hard ground ball to second base. Now, there's some uh, sort of rules for ground balls. Um, and I have that in a chart. So there's several charts for this game and I'm still working on the, uh, the gameplay. You can see here that the, the manual is quite short. Gameplay is quite easy, <laughs> so it's not very difficult. Uh, so it's not going to be a long and lengthy manual other than the charts that are involved. Uh, so we, you get a little overview and a reminder of sort of how to go through and check everything. Um, and that's just what I explained to you now. So it takes one minute to explain it to someone. Uh, we have different descriptions of the flyouts and description of the ground outs and what those are. Uh, this is basically this chart, but larger. And... Uh, we have some, so some basic runner advancement. If there's a ground ball normal, ground ball soft, ground ball hard, fly ball deep, fly ball normal, fly ball shallow. Uh, so just some basic runner advancement. So with the runner on first, uh, with a normal play, uh, the player makes the play at second base. So it's basically the fielder's choice to second base batter's safe at first and anybody else moves up uh, with the runner on third infield at normal depth the runner from third scores and then there's a fielder choice fielder's choice on the play whether it's a second base or a first base um, for a soft grounder the only play is to first base uh, so it's like a little 
you know, a little soft tapper down to third or to first or it just gets past the pitcher's mound and really the only play that the fielder has is to first base so that's sort of the idea there uh and then a hard ground ball uh is an automatic double play if there's a double play situation possible um and you know typically you're going to turn that from second base to first base uh if there's a runner on third with no out uh no outs then the run scores on the double play so uh, if the bases are loaded, obviously you can do uh, a home to first double play as well. So that's uh, definitely a choice. Uh, for a deep fly ball, the runner on third scores automatically. This is like hitting the ball to the warning track or up to the wall. Uh, the runner on second can advance if the ball is hit to center field or right field. So he has an opportunity to move up on a deep fly ball. And then the runner on first uh, can advance if the hit is to left field. So... Uh, on a normal or a shallow fly ball. At this point, there are no runner advancement, although you could certainly come up with those. Um, we just don't have any running statistics, so uh, on the cards you can see. Um, bunting plays, squeeze plays, uh, we have charts for. And basically, you're just going to roll a, a D, 1D10. That's all it requires. We have infield in plays for all the different situations, so runner at third. First and third, nobody out. First and third, one out. Second and third, nobody out. Second and third, one out, etc. And even bases loaded. So if you want to play the infield in, you would roll against this chart instead of rolling off of this chart, and then that would give you your uh, that would give you your play. Uh, we have steals for second, third, and home plates. And then they're broken down by the different stolen base percentages. So 70 plus. Uh, 50 to 70 percent and then less than 50 percent uh, would use this column here uh, that's where the uh, this one that's where your stolen base percentage comes in uh, so you would check that stolen base percentage and then roll 1d10 and check the appropriate column there is an opportunity for an e2 on the steal so and the opportunity for a pickoff um, so if it's a pickoff then they get the runner and he is going to be out. Um, okay. And so we have these, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, these rare and unusual plays. Um, on each of these, when you do the player finder for all of the different types of outs uh, or the error, uh, you have this rare line. So if you roll a D10 and the, the roll result is a 10, then you're going to want to check the <clears throat> rare or unusual plays. So we have one for here, uh, right off of the pitcher card or pitcher side, and that's here for the pitcher outcome. So you have things like uh, hit. it's hit over the foul pole. Is it a fair or foul ball? The umpires get together. You have to roll the D10 again and see, you know, is it fair or is it foul? If it's foul, you re-roll. If it's fair, then it's a home run. Um, a two-hour delay, both the pitchers have to be replaced. Uh, so then you just have to remove both pitchers and continue the game where it is. <clears throat> There's catcher's interference. Um, the ball hitting the batter as he goes uh, after he leaves the batter's box. Um, line drive. There's a chance for a triple play here. Um, a lot of sort of not not rare plays all the time. So obviously a hard line drive. Over the shortstop, he leaps and makes the snow cone grab. But you don't see that that much. You know, it's not uh, super common for the shortstop to be able to make that sort of play. Uh, but it's also not, like, really rare, like a triple play. Uh, we have ground out. So if there's a ground out to uh, a soft ground out, then you, and you hit the D10, then you're going to want to roll against this chart. And I'm not going to spoil all these for you because uh, some of them are quite quite fun and quite unusual but basically i have these for rare plays for every sort of uh, occasion including foul outs uh, so there's one for foul outs here uh, there's one for errors and quite often it's going to turn into a two base error uh, as opposed to these which are just going to be a one base error and then also have some for strikeouts so wild pitch on strike three the batter's safe at first all the runners move up uh, one base so <clears throat> and then you would just credit the pitcher with the wild pitch and then put the runner at first base uh, we also have 
swinging or looking strikes here. So if you roll a nine on a, let's say you get a strikeout here and then your D10 is a nine, then that would be a strikeout looking. And we have a little bit of a gloss, excuse me, a glossary here <clears throat> that tells you what each of those things is. You can't really see the K right here. It's got a little dot next to it, but you can see it when you are looking at the page. So that is the game chart and that's the game engine. And basically uh, that's gonna get you almost all the way home. Uh, I did wanna show you one final thing, a um, couple final things. So what dice do you need? You need some sort of a decider die. Uh, a D6 will work fine. Just try to make it a different color so it's easy to spot when you roll it. Um, you need two D6s uh, that are going to be our roll for here. We're going to take the low number first, so 11 to 66 and with the low number. Uh, 21 results there, but obviously with the conditionals, it increases the number of results that are possible on every play. And then you need a D10 of some sort. Uh, mine has a zero, so you would use the zero as a 10. Uh, it can be a different color, same color. It doesn't really matter uh, about the colors. The colors are really for you because if you roll these two, you're always going to take the low number. So they can actually be the same, uh, the same one. But this, this reads as a 12, right? And so I keep getting 12. So this would read as a 36 or a 36. Okay. And then this would be off of the uh, pitcher's chart. This would be off of the hitter's chart. So one to three off the hitter. Uh, four to six off of the pitcher's chart. And then you want to roll this and just have that just in case you need it. Uh, I also wanted to show you the cards. So you can get a sense of the size of the cards here. So this is next to a, uh, a playing card. It's just a regular old playing card. And um, I have gone through, this is 65 pound stock that I had just some scrap paper that I had around. So you can see uh, they're nice and big. The cards are nice and big. Uh, the font is 12 point font. And except for here, you know, the header is a little larger. This is a little larger, but the main text font is uh, 12 for the numbers and um, nine, I believe, or 10 for the headings. And you can still see them very well. Uh, if you print them on cardstock, you can see that they move very, very well. Uh, but Mike Flanagan, Cy Young winner, 21, 23 and 9 that, that season. Uh, we have all of his gameplay values. This is home runs per nine innings, so less than one per nine innings. Uh, his batting average against his whip, K percentage, and walk percentage. And then you'll be using various stats like hits uh, or mm, wild pitches. You'll be using various things uh, as you play the game as well. And it's got a, his his role here, plus uh, how he throws. So as a pitcher, uh, that's what we're mostly concerned about. So you're going to have a pitcher card and you're going to have a hitter card uh, for every pitcher that got in uh, to the game as a batter and every pitcher that got into the game as a pitcher. So uh, this is Easterly, you can see here. He only got into four games, <clears throat> only pitched 2.2 innings, and so got lit up, <clears throat> and um, he would be the last pitcher. These are all separated by uh, batter total batters faced for pitchers and plate appearances for hitters. So your first, <clears throat> your first hitters are going to be the ones with the most plate appearances. So that's how it separated that out. So basically your starters are going to be, you know, toward the top. These are all going to be starters um, or mostly starters. May Collins might have been a platoon player, 429 uh, plate appearances, or maybe he, he was hurt for a part of the season. I don't really know. But then the pitchers are separated by total batters face. So for... Um, I don't have them in order here, uh, but I believe that Dennis Martinez is first and Flanagan is second. So you can see his innings pitch 266, 292 for Dennis Martinez, 15 and 16 on the year. Uh, kind of a tough luck pitcher. 
but also relievers are in here. So T.P. Martinez, uh, 78 innings over 39 games, uh, pitched more than Steve Stone um, in terms of, of total batter space, which uh, I believe that's correct. Okay, uh, so these are the cards. I've gone through and I've, I have a little rounder, card rounder, and, you know, rounded it up really nicely. Uh, one of the things that makes this game or, you know, most of my games pretty unique is you can see that it goes all the way to the edge. So you have uh, one, two, three, four cuts to make on your cards and you're done. So each of them goes all the way to the uh, edge as long as your printer supports sort of uh, all the way to the edge uh, printing. Just make sure you remove any sort of margins or anything like that. But uh, the PDF file comes uh, all the way to the edge. So I just wanted to make sure that that was there um, so that you can, uh, you don't have to do a lot of like little trims and things like that off of the edges. Now what that does is make the cards a little bit larger, but uh, my guess is in the community, it's not really going to be a big deal for cards to be a little bit larger than a little bit smaller. Uh, which might be a little bit more of a, a challenge or a problem. Uh, but everything is easy to read, easy to see. And um, hopefully uh, you'll give this game a try. Uh, I'm about ready to release it. I need to do a little bit of marketing. Um, so you can see that your total footprint is going to be uh, the game engine chart and whatever cards. Let's say you have two cards, you know, just next to each other and then you have your your dice and then uh, if you want to keep the charts off to the side i've just printed the entire booklet and stapled it and then you can flip through um, the those or i have them each on separate pages so i don't know if you can see uh so the bunt bunts uh and the bunt play strategies are all on one page and then the next page starts with the infield in plays um, on a whole new page. I didn't start them here. So if you only wanted to have the bunting plays, uh, you could. And if you wanted to keep the others just sort of uh, somewhere else or online, you can do that as well. So you can, uh, I try to make it so that you can print only the pages that you wanted or needed. And then those would sort of be, those charts would be sort of self-contained uh, within them their own selves and not bleeding over into other charts so uh, trying to think about all the ways that you might want to play or print this and um, hopefully i've thought of that if there's something that i haven't uh, then when you get the game if you could let me know that would be, that would be great and i'll just reformat and uh, send out an email to everybody letting them know they can re-download it and uh, it will be fixed but a little bit of editing to do and a little bit of um, marketing to do, a little bit of branding. Otherwise, the game is ready to go. It's called The Game of Dice Baseball, and I'm, I'm hoping that because it's mostly based off of uh, player statistics and it's been a little bit of pain in the neck to get all of the, uh, all the appropriate uh, the cards just the way I want, but once I get the cards the way I want, then it should be a matter of just filling in the data and pumping out uh, new seasons. Really, the only thing <clears throat> I have to do by hand is uh, is the the pitching rolls and their uh, arms and batting. So, are they a switch hitter, left-handed, right-handed? Uh, what are they? So, the rest of it uh, sort of fills in itself, and um, hopefully, that's going to uh, fill some some different things that gamers want, which is all the players all the teams, all the years with some complexity, but also easy and with some flow. So this is not a difficult game to play, but it does have, it takes into account uh, some of the major parts of each player and sort of their attributes that they bring to the table uh, to make for a great game. If you uh, haven't watched my game seven uh, with the Orioles and the Pirates from the 79 uh, World Series. I actually played out the entire World Series, but I recorded Game 7. Uh, game 7 was a 3-2 win uh, for Baltimore, and they actually reversed the tide of history and won the World Series. 
over the pirates in a, a really thrilling fashion. Um, who was it? Rick Dempsey. Rick Dempsey hit a home run in the sixth inning. They hung on for the win. And uh, you can see that there's a number of plays that happen inside the game, especially once you add in the, uh, the charts for the rare plays. Because uh, then you get some real baseball flavor in there with some more unusual plays or some, some more thrilling plays. Guys going back to the wall, catching it and hitting up against the wall. Uh, making diving catches, making missed plays on balls and things like that. So some some really interesting baseball action. And so if you love the game, if you want something more simple, but also that has a lot of flavor of baseball, uh, if you want to learn more about the history of baseball, then this is a great game uh, because it has all the stats uh, that, are, that you're going to care about. And then those stats actually inform the game play. So these are not ratings that I'm coming up with. Um, that's not how the charts are made. And even though it's a 50-50 game, it doesn't feel like, uh, it feels like the, the pitchers and the hitters are taken into account, uh, each one. So hopefully I, you give it a try, and uh, I'll make another announcement when the game is ready to purchase uh, with the URL that you can go and purchase it and all that good stuff. But for now, I just wanted to make this formal introduction uh, to the world. Uh, the game of dice baseball, sort of a throwback game. And uh, that's where I started. I went back to the beginning of dice baseball in the 20s and rebuilt the game from there. So I didn't want to take it in the same direction as on base baseball, which is what I, that's how I built that game as well. I wanted to take it more in sort of a classical direction, uh, a la APA or Strad or something like that. So uh, hopefully this game can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with those uh, giants in the hobby. And uh, I, I'm going to price it in a place where you can give it a shot and uh, it's not going to break the bank. So there's a lot of printing to do if you want to print the entire season. Uh, you can also print just the sheets uh, without having to do all the cutting. And you can also just put it up on your computer screen uh, if you wanted to do that as well. All right. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments section below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, just click uh, subscribe. And if you click the little bell icon, you're going to be notified every time I post new content. Uh, with On Base, I'm going to be posting new content soon. Uh, spring training is about to kick off. And so we have lots of uh, interesting things coming for the future for On Base, including a pre play 2023 pre play roster sheet set so that you can actually pre-play or play along with the 2023 season using the ZIPS projected rosters, uh, uh, ZIPS projections for the rosters. Alrighty. Um, I think that's it from here. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll get to them as quickly as I can. And uh, appreciate your support. Uh, I, I hope that you go out and you support this game as well. I think you'll find it to be uh, a delight and very interesting and fun and sort of moving you back to the way things were uh, a long time ago with dice baseball uh, sort of quick moving and a good flow all right i think that's it from here thanks for watching and i'll see you again next time